The HGP-1A hydraulic pump is a dependable gear-driven pump that is used the world over. It is a relatively low volume pump so it would be restricted to small projects. Uh, for example, on a small tractor, it could be used for a small front-end loader, that type of thing. It has a rotation that is clockwise for the version that we'll be talking about today, but there is a version that can turn counterclockwise that is available. The main concern for the video that we're going to be showing today is concerning the threads. It comes with 3 8 PT threads. Now what in the world are PT threads? How can we adapt those threads to USA national pipe threads? So that's the topic, the theme for uh, this video. So sit back and relax and uh, hopefully we can be of help to you. Thank you for watching. Now, one of the big questions that comes up to mind is how do I get my fittings onto this thing? What is What fitting size is this? And if it's available, if it's listed in the sale pitch that they're giving you on whatever website that you're going to, um, it's going to tell you it's a 3 8 PT. So what in the world is a 3 8 PT? This PT thread, and I'm going to try to give you some information on it, but this PT thread is a Japanese thread. And it's used quite extensively in Asia. This is a Chinese built pump. It's a quality pump. Uh, I was amazed to find information on this specific pump. And uh, it is used extensively throughout the world. So it is uh, a pump that has a good reputation. And it is a pump that you can get the data on. And that's what I'm going to try to help you with in regards to how to get this threaded and what a PT thread is. Now a PT thread, as we mentioned, it is a Japanese thread. Does it have any equivalence that it's easy to get fittings for? Because if you look up in American uh, hydraulic sources and you are asking for PT uh, fittings, you're not going to find them. Well, at least I haven't been able to find them anywhere. They may be available somewhere that I haven't checked, but uh, um, they're not readily available. So is there an equivalent that you can use? Well, yes, indeed, there is. This British thread is the same. Okay, now let me qualify that. This PT thread is tapered. They make a British 3 8 fitting that is tapered. Hard to find. So here I'm back to square one again. Why put an adapter on here and then another adapter in order to achieve my national pipe thread. Now, the reason why I say national pipe thread is my goal is because my hydraulic hoses are going to be national pipe thread. Unless they have a special fitting on them to accomplish a certain uh, thing. But that's another animal. If I want to connect a hose, a hydraulic hose here in America to this, I'm going to need to adapt this to national pipe thread. So why not use a fitting like this? This is a 3 8 pipe thread. Now you can get this in a 3 8 to 3 8. This particular one is 3 8 to a quarter. 
for my projects, 90% of my projects, I use quarter inch hydraulic hose. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Here I have a quarter inch hose. This is a um, quarter inch national pipe thread. Okay. Here's the fitting that I'm eventually going to be using. And that screws directly onto that. Now, right now, I haven't tapped this out, but what I'm going to do is tap this out with National Pipe Thread, and then this can screw straight into it. And that's what I'm wanting to accomplish, except I want these threads here to go in further. I don't want them to stop at just two or three threads. I want to get most of this down inside there. So that's my, my goal. And no matter whether you're using 3 8 hydraulic line or half inch hydraulic line, this fitting that comes on it, if it's a standard hose, is going to be national pipe thread. So the adapter that I put on here, I want to make hopefully just one adapter into it. I don't want to have this adapter, then this adapter, and then this or some, some other creation. I want this to be as simple as I can get it. And since I have to tap this out anyway, then I'm going to go ahead and tap it out with National Pipe Thread. And why do I think I can get away with this? Because the threads are very close. They're not exact, but they're very close. And I believe I can go in and get myself some good threads in there so that I can get this fitting in there tight to where it's going to seal and especially if I use either Teflon tape or hydraulic sealing thread sealing compound on it either way uh, I think I can get a really good seal now uh, you can see it says 3 8 18 now, I want to be careful that how I do this that, for example, if I'm tapping it this way, what's going to happen to all my metal shavings? They're going to go down into the pump. I don't want that. So I'm going to have to tap this basically upside down. Okay? So that my metal shavings will have a tendency to fall out. So that when I pull the tap out finally, I'll have probably a whole bunch of uh, aluminum shavings from this housing here on this. I made up this little uh, adapter, you might call it, uh, so that I can mount the pump temporarily onto this, and then I can clamp this into a vise so as to achieve my straight up and down so that I'm not tapping from the top down, but I'm going from the bottom up. Now something to take note of is the distance from here down to where I meet those gears. I don't want to run this tap and down into those gears. I want to stay off of it, okay, because I could do damage. It's right at one inch. So that means I can go down on this particular tap. Now, you may be using a different tap. So, for example, here's another tap. It's slightly different distance. So just make sure. I'm going to say I need at least three threads showing down here at the end. And I've got quite a ways I can go. shavings
throw a rag up in here. Gotta clean some of that out. I'm getting, you can see that with the camera right there. Little piece of shaving. I don't want that to go into the pump. So I'm going to clean that again. Got another little piece. Clean it again. The only other way to do this is to disassemble the pump and work with just this piece of the, the pump. But I really don't want to do all that. Let's see. Take my fitting. If I get halfway in, I'm going to be doing just fine. It looks like that's really close. There's my metal braces to firm up the wood. I'm gonna make sure I start off with a clean tap and put oil on it. Gonna thread it in. As far as it will go. And then I'll start. Oh yeah, yeah. So we'll get rid of all those shavings. Wipe that off again. Okay, so I got a clean tap. I'm gonna take and run a rag up in there and clean that out so that I don't have any of the shavings obstructing my tap. Surprisingly, that's coming out pretty clean. Got a couple of them that time. Got, uh, got them right there. There's one there. One there, one there. So if they're very small, but they would be damaging to that pump. Okay, let's just try this. See how far up it goes. It's pretty close. I bet when I tighten it, it'll be the same. And so here it is. I've taken the wooden jig off for doing my tapping operation. And uh, of course, you can see on the back side of my pump, the end, this will be the suction side from my uh, reservoir tank. And this will be my output pressure side. And uh, look for links uh, to that outfit that will supply information for you on this. Uh, also, I'll be as specific as I can um, 
on a sheet that I'll make up as far as important uh, information. For example, this piece right here, that's uh, on this flange, that's two inches. You need a two inch hole for that to mount flush. In regards to additional specifications, we take note that this pump is about a two gallon per minute pump. Now this is a relatively low volume pump, but it can be used in small hydraulic projects. Maximum pressure of 3,045 PSI. An interim RPM speed would be 1,800 RPM. Maximum speed 13, excuse me, 3,200 RPM. Minimum speed 600 RPM. So that gives you a wide range of RPM selection there to find what works for you. Dropping down to talking about the flange, uh, we keep in mind that, as mentioned, this was a two-bolt flange, this version, and it has a 200 millimeter or 2-inch diameter riser. The riser is about 4 millimeters tall. That's a little more than an eighth of an inch tall. Now, in regards to the input shaft, it's a 12 millimeter straight shaft with a key. Do not confuse this with half-inch. Half inch is 12.7 millimeters, not 12 millimeters. So this shaft is 12 millimeters with the key. In regards to the oil inlet and outlet, they are PT38. This is a Japanese tapered thread. The equivalent thread available in the USA is a British standard pipe thread known as BSPT. The T stands for tapered. This can be found at discounthydraulichose.com. A 3 8 PT is equal to a 3 8 BSPT. And note, Discount Hydraulic Hose only offers one fitting type in the 3 8 BSPT. So that means it will require a second fitting to adapt it over to the NPT used in the USA. And that's why I chose this alternative uh, approach of retapping it straight into a NPT fitting uh, as presented in the video. The part number is HGP-1A-F6RX2B. Okay, so the information starting with the F there, first off, the F stands for it's a flange mount. It's not a foot mount, as you can see the color code, the yellow there. Then going on to the R, you can see that it's telling you how it turns. It turns clockwise. If there was an L there, it would be anti-clockwise or backwards. Okay, then the X, it tells you that it is a straight shaft with a key. If there was a Y there, it would be a splined shaft. And then the 2B helps us to appreciate the type of flange. You've got several different choices there in flanges for it. This is a two-bolt flange as shown there in the picture. In any case, I thank you for watching. I hope it's helpful and uh, that your hydraulic project will be success. And uh, please click the subscribe button. See you next time. Thanks.